So this is a schematic image of the binding and sintering. It is considered these reactions occur if we can see the magnified green body in the furnace. Of course, we can see them, but if we can, that's kind of the thing that is happening. As shown in the debinding images, the decomposition of the binder or debinding is progressed via diffusion or dispersion reaction to the solution. Thus, these reactions occur at the interface between the solution and the binder. Therefore, the decomposition is progressing from the surface of the green part. So the thicker the green part is, the longer it takes to decompose the binder. Additionally, as shown in the bottom image here, if a sudden aggressive defining reaction occurs, there will be deformation. The gradual decomposition progress is important to achieve the satisfaction of the tight tolerance requirement. So the debinding process is the most time consuming process in the whole mean process. Importantly, during the debinding, the shrinkage is not seen or the metal powder location is not changed. The debinding temperature is much lower than the diffusion temperature that is normally 80% or higher of melting point of the metal. For example, the stainless steel 316L, which is most common, one of the most common uh, material used in the main sector, the melting point is around 1,370 degrees Celsius, while around 1,200 degrees Celsius is applied for sintering temperature. However, the sintering temperature can be varied according to the powder characteristics. A significant shrinkage or this densi densitification only happens in the sintering process. Once the debinding is processed properly, very few binder remains between the metal powder to maintain the component shape. The very few amount of the binder will be decomposed in a higher temperature that is close enough to the metal diffusion temperature to maintain the component shape. Additionally, if the remaining binder is very small, the sintering shrinkage will equally progress in all directions. Thus, the green part shape will remain in the sintering process. Therefore, the debinding process is important for the tolerance control in mean production. These important debinding processes can be categorized in three types according to the debinding solvent or atmosphere, such as thermal debinding, solvent debinding, and catalytic debinding. Thermal debinding is the oldest debinding process. Soon after the MIM process was developed, the solvent debinding process was introduced. Weight process is a most famous process and it helps the meme industry to grow significantly. After that, an even faster catalytic debinding process was invented by BSF. During the early 2000s, this process was widely introduced to Chinese meme component manufacturers and supported a great market development by the mobile phone component manufacturing industry. Now let me introduce the characteristic of each debinding process. The first one is thermal debinding. As I mentioned previously, this is the oldest method and it is a stable process. However, it's time consuming. The laminar gas flow maximizes the debinding process in efficiency yet the reaction is progressing quite slow. On the other hand, it is possible to do both debinding and sintering in one chamber, though it re requires careful atmospheric control and a special vacuum line. If it can be done in one chamber process, the most fragile brown parts, which are after removing the majority of the binder, 
and each metal powder supported with very little amount of binder don't need to be handled. Thus, it's likely the production yield will improve. Also, with the smaller and more complicated component design, this process with less brown part handling is greatly beneficial. The second one is solvent debinding. The solvent debinding uses organic solvent such as hexane, heptane, or supercritical phase solvent such as liquid phase CO2 or water. The debinding reaction is seen at the interface between the solvent and the binder as shown in the previous slide. Thus liquid phase or gaseous phase solvent is applied in an elevated temperature. Elevating the temperature is increasing the reaction speed in both vapor and liquid phase. Among these, the organic solvent is deployed most widely for debinding the wax. Commonly, wax is used as a composition of mean binder to give a good flowability in lower temperature range. It will be depending on the mean manufacturer policy, but 40 to 100% of binder volume is wax. Thus, with the binder system deploying the wax, the organic solvent debinding reduces the the binding time significantly. The supercritical CO2 fluid can be used since it's high diffus diffusivity with high density. Thus, it is said the efficiency of the binding is high. However, the equipment is very costly and the operation is not easy at this moment. Therefore, it is seldom applied in the main industry. Also, water is drawing renewed attention recently from the point of sustainable processing. Generally, polyethylene glycol PEG base binder is used for this water dividing. Though there is a low flowability issue, it is getting attention. Different from thermal dividing, it is impossible to process the solvent dividing and sintering in one chamber as of now. Lastly, uh, we talk about catalytic debinding. So far, the serial production applicable with this debinding system is only the catamol system from BASF. BASF patented the catamol system in early 1990s. It uses nitric acid gas to decompose their binder in lower temperature than that of thermal decomposition temperature. The base material is polyoxymethylene, BOM, and the thermal decomposition temperature is higher than 400 degrees, while in the catalytic atmosphere, the decomposition temperature is low as around 150 degrees. If the debinding is held in lower temperature, the deformation by melting the binder is minimized. Thus, it is widely accepted in newly developing manufacturers in early 2000s. Additionally, the debinding speed is increased drastically. The debinding speed is 1 to 2 mm per hour, while thermal debinding is 5 to 10 times slower. Therefore, for large size mean part production, the catalytic debinding is beneficial. On the other hand, the flowability is slightly limited, especially for thin or small mean components. Recently, BASF introduced a newly developed high flowability series called Catamol Evo, where the flowability is improved. However, the mold temperature is still required to set high at 180 degrees for the injection process. Thus, the thermal degradation is significant, which leads to poor feedstock material yield. Same as the solvent debinding, it is required to use the special debinding furnace that is capable of handling the nitric acid. Thus, the debinding and sintering furnace should be separated in the catalytic debinding process. Now, let's compare the time consumption against the temperature among the debinding processes. As you can see, the most time consuming process is thermal debinding. 
the shortest one is catalytic debinding. This is just representative data. So actual processing time should be vary depending on the binder type and the component size. The previously mentioned three debinding types are considered first debinding, since little amount of binder should remain in between the metal powders until the diffusion bonding of metal powder starts to maintain the component shape. Therefore, in any time type of debinding, in, in any type of debinding, it is held as the first debinding in either separated debinding furnace or debinding sintering in one chamber, which is our case. So the second final debinding is held in the sintering furnace, as mentioned. The second debinding is held at a higher temperature range than the first debinding temperature range. It's very close to the metal diffusion temperature, thus it's required to have a proper gas flow control system. Otherwise, it's impossible to avoid contamination to the sintered component. Importantly, the sintering temperature is the same in any debinding processes as long as it is using the exact same type of metal powder. Now, I will introduce the sintering furnace type. There are two types of MIM sintering furnaces deployed batch type furnace and continuous type furnace. Since the MIM process is deployed for serial production, the continuous furnaces were widely introduced until late 2000s. However, as a small and functional metal component production is required more and more, the batch type furnace is more common, commonly installed lately. The batch type furnace has lower productivity compared to the continuous type furnace. However, it's very easy to change the sintering atmosphere and to achieve a higher vacuum level. For a smaller and more precise production, the batch type furnace is more applicable. And this is why we use the batch type furnace in our facility. The batch type sintering furnace can be separated into two types, the with and without the defining system. The majority of the main manufacturer deployed a separated furnace system, not only minimizing the contamination carry in, but also the processing time difference between debinding and sintering to maximize the productivity. However, more and more furnace manufacturers introduced debinding sintering in one chamber system recently, and it must reflect the higher demand of one chamber system by the component manufacturers. Thanks to the furnace manufacturers' technical development, less contamination is seen in one chamber system. The one chamber batch type furnace is the best option for smaller component size in a smaller lot size production. Since we have been focusing on small metal parts production by MIM, since our MIM business was established in the 90s, our debinding and sintering uh, microMIM technology will help your ideal part production, especially with small and complex designed metal parts. For example, we can uh, also offer the additive manufacturing uh, trial. As we introduced in the previous webinar series, we installed a lithography-based printer. This so-called LMM printer produces an equivalent green part in the main process, thus the debinding and sintering process are also required. The binder type is typically different from the MIM system, yet our cultivated experience with MIM production is still very useful. To realize the agile manufacturing, we have installed a little batch type furnace. It has 20 centimeter on the side tube chamber. 
surely we can use both a serial production furnace or a little furnace for both MIM and LMM green parts. We believe it will increase our agility, especially for the prototype phase. So please let us know if you have any interesting component ideas to be realized by our micro technology.